The RMS Titanic, one of the largest ocean-faring vessels ever constructed. Despite claims that it was virtually unsinkable, tragedy struck on its maiden voyage in the year of our Lord 1912, when it collided with an iceberg. Thanks to poor evacuation procedures, an insufficient number of lifeboats, and no help from nearby ships, the vessel plunged to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. 1,500 people perished in the event, which is still considered one of the worst maritime disasters in human history. To this day, the name Titanic, once synonymous with man's accomplishments in engineering, is now synonymous with man's hubris in the face of God and nature. But what if the Titanic did not succumb to a known natural disaster? What if it wasn't an accident, but rather an attack? What if this mightiest of ships met its fate at the hands of something impossibly large and alive? Just so we're clear, it didn't. Of all the alternate theories I've heard about the sinking of the Titanic, giant monster attack isn't considered seriously by even the kookiest of crackpots. It does, however, make for an interesting concept for Titanicus, as conceived by Titanic Creations. Titanic Creations is a relatively new company founded with the intent of making high-quality figures of original kaiju characters. Titanicus is the company's flagship monster, the kaiju who sunk the Titanic and was mistaken for an iceberg by the survivors. I know all of this because the figure comes with a mini-comic explaining its backstory, but we'll get to this later. Titanicus is a figure first and foremost, so let's put our focus there for now. I've got the 15 centimeter version of Titanicus, the smaller and less expensive option because Omni's not made of money. There's a larger 30 centimeter version with a different head sculpt if size is what you're looking for, but I'll be focusing on the small one, which I picked up from the company's booth at G-Fest 26. The figure is made of PVC vinyl, and the material is quite sturdy. You obviously can't tell this from the video, but the figure has quite a bit of heft to it being far denser than the similarly sized and articulated kaiju figures Bandai is known to release. The flimsiest part of the figure is the cranial horn, which as you can see is still a bit bent at the end. This is because the figure is stored in its box upside down, and thus there was pressure on this very small point. Fortunately, all it took was a little bit of fidgeting to get it to a point where it's mostly straight. And other than that, the figure is in great condition. Paint-wise, Titanicus is predominantly gray and white. This is very different from most artistic depictions of him. In the accompanying mini-comic, he's colored cobalt blue, though I suppose you can chalk that up to lighting, and on the box, he's bright purple. Not that I think gray is a bad color for a kaiju, I just find it curious. Titanicus's body isn't flat gray, though. There's some airbrushing work that varies between lighter and darker gray, giving him a subtly mottled but naturalistic appearance. The airbrushing even extends into the base of the spikes to make them look as though they are growing out of him. Naturally, the spikes are white to create the appearance of an iceberg, and not much variation is found here. There are a few places on the figure where the paint looks a little worn or incomplete, but they are minor details that are very easy to overlook. You have to get really close at really specific angles to see these portions, so it's far from distracting. The only other color is on the tongue, which is a medium shade of red, as most tongues are. Titanicus only has four points of articulation, which isn't all that uncommon for kaiju figures of this sort. Both of his arms move at the shoulders, and both legs move at the hips. There isn't really any place to naturally put a neck joint because of how the neck is designed and constructed. A tail joint could have been included, but not having one makes for an unbroken sculpt. Plus, let's be honest, it was probably cheaper to produce the head, body, and tail all as one piece. Remember, Titanic Creations is a new company. As for the sculpt, that's where the figure really stands out. The only parts of Titanicus which are not detailed are the bottoms of his feet, which are flat aside from what I assume is the sculptor's signature on the left foot. Aside from that, Every square inch of Titanicus has detail. As a matter of fact, the spiky portions add the most visual interest to him because they are asymmetrical. Remember, Titanicus is visually inspired by icebergs, and you're not going to find any symmetrical icebergs in nature. These are broken chunks of frozen water exposed to the elements. Due to erosion by wind and water, 
melting from the heat of the sun and collision with other drifting objects, icebergs are going to be irregularly shaped, and this irregularity is incorporated into the figure. The dual rows of spikes running down his tail are all differently sized, with the right side being slightly larger than the left. The curved spines at the end of his tail, while generally symmetrical, are varied in the details, as though their use has occasionally led to them being broken and chipped. The groove pattern on his massive dorsal spike, as well as where it connects to his body, is also different no matter what angle you look at it from. You can easily see that feature jutting out of the water and being mistaken as a natural iceberg. Even a few details on the kaiju's face deliberately retain this asymmetry. The attention to detail is truly impressive. The only odd part of the whole assembly is how the bottom of his tail, where it rests on the ground, has an elliptical section that's completely flat. I'm not entirely sure why this was necessary for the figure to stand level, but then again, it's not noticeable unless you turn the figure over. When he's upright, which is how he'll usually be seen, you can't really tell. So it's a solid figure all around, but it needs more than just a fancy design. Remember, Titanic Creations wants Titanicus to be their flagship character, their own Godzilla leading the charge with a whole slew of original kaiju. As such, Titanicus needs more than just a fancy design, he needs to be able to stand on his own as a character. That's where the mini-comic and the backstory come into play. The mini-comic is only eight pages long, providing a very quick introduction to Titanicus and when Modern Man first became aware of him. There's very little text, so most of the story and characterization is conveyed through visuals, which paint a clear picture of Titanicus as a menacing, destructive force. He deliberately attacks the Titanic without provocation, as opposed to just being disturbed by it running into him, so he's clearly not a friendly creature. We also get an introduction to his powers, which are appropriately ice-based, and a sense of how ridiculously huge he is. The Titanic was 175 feet tall, including the funnels, with a length of 882 feet 9 inches and Titanicus breaks it in half just by slapping it with his hand like a kid playing with toy boats in a bathtub. It's just a guess, but Titanicus may very well be bigger than Godzilla Earth. While it's an interesting bit of alternate history, it doesn't appear to give us too much at first, until we remember what the Titanic has come to represent. Though much of the story has been distorted by legend, the Titanic is seen these days as a symbol of human arrogance. It was claimed to be the ultimate feat in nautical engineering which was nigh impossible to sink. Then, as if by divine retribution, it not only sunk on its maiden voyage, but its sinking was the worst maritime disaster up to that point in history, and it still remains a measurement for disaster today. Titanicus gives that divine retribution a horrifying face. We can combine this with a trailer on Titanic Creation's YouTube page which says Titanicus is a creature known in myth, sometimes as a destroyer, sometimes as a protector, meaning he plays a much grander role in the natural world. So while there's still a lot we don't know yet, the implication is that Titanicus might indeed be a kind of divine retribution, bringing his wrath down on whatever or whoever deserves it. Naturally, this isn't the first time we've seen a kaiju represent retribution for human arrogance. It's evident to me that the effort put into Titanicus extends far beyond the figure itself. With these layers in place, I would say that Titanicus has lots of potential which extends well beyond just being a cool-looking collectible. All Titanic Creations needs to do is keep up this trend with their next figure, the vampire beast Nosferadon, who already has an intriguing design. I'm always open to new kaiju experiences, and Titanic Creations has definitely won me over. Theirs is a world of monsters I look forward to exploring in the future. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer signing off.
Now if only I could get figures made of the kaiju in my book. That would be the book you're just about to see a little promo for. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.